Have you ever noticed the orange box in the track header section of your DaVinci Resolve timeline? It's not quite the same as anything in Premiere or Avid, and Final Cut Pro, it doesn't even have tracks, so you're probably wondering, what the heck does this thing do? Well, it's a powerful option to precisely command the destination of your clips from the source monitor to the timeline using commands like insert and overwrite edit. These destination controls are essential to understand if you want to cut with your keyboard to speed up your editing process, but don't worry, because they're super simple basic controls, let me show you how they work. The orange outline box is called the Track Destination Selection, and one of the most significant ways that this differs if you're coming from Adobe Premiere is that this only serves one function. That one function gives you the option to command or control your destination of the clip from the source viewer to the timeline without needing to do a drag and drop edit with your mouse. Sorry for the keyboard shortcut modifier puns, they are intended, so stay tuned towards the end of this tutorial if you like shortcuts. And just so you know, this orange destination box has nothing to do with copying and pasting to specific tracks. That's one of the features of the auto track selector button, and I've got a great video that I'll link in the description if you want to demystify that control. Thankfully, the orange destination box is much more straightforward. Source clips will end up on whatever tracks have the orange outline visible. By default, it'll be on V1 and A1 if you have video and audio in your source clip. But if your clip only has audio, you're not going to see an orange box on a video track because there's no video that exists on the source audio clip. Now let's do an insert edit targeted to V1 and A1 by dragging a clip with in and out marks from the source viewer to the timeline viewer. As you drag, an overlay will appear with the edit commands visible, so let's drop it on insert. Insert pushes clips down to the right and out of the way to get in there. Insert will make your overall timeline longer. But if you want your clip to go on video track 2 and your audio to A2, just click V2 and A2 with your mouse. It will confusingly change to say V1 and A1 because it's referring to the source track numbers. And this time let's do an overwrite edit by marking the range on the timeline with an in and out point for where we want the clips to be restrained to and then clicking the overwrite icon in the tool list. Overwrite will not change your timeline length and is a great way to restrict how much of a clip is going onto a timeline if you already have a rough cut together. I like it for B-roll cutaways and titles. The other thing about track destination selection is that you can limit what tracks you want to put on the timeline from the source clip. Maybe you just want the video or the audio or even just some specific audio tracks from a multi-channel recording. If you don't want part of a clip to end up on a timeline track, click the orange box and it'll change to be filled in with gray. The orange is going to be gone, which means it's disabled and it won't add that part of the source clip onto the timeline. An everyday use for doing this would be with a B-roll clip that you don't want that lousy camera audio on the timeline. Click the orange box around the audio track until it's filled with gray. Mark your timeline using I for in point and O for out point, and this time use the keyboard shortcut F10. This will perform an overwrite edit without using the mouse. Only the video portion of the B-roll ends up on the timeline, which can save you time from not needing to delete the bad audio later on. Side note though, if you're on a Mac, make sure you have checked the box to enable function keys to work as standard keys in the system preferences keyboard section. Otherwise, F10 might not work as expected. The drag and drop equivalent of this would be an option drag for video only or a shift drag for audio only, but you can't precisely constrain a drag and drop edit, so that's why I prefer using insert and overwrite with in and out points on the timeline. Now the one gotcha is to make sure the track you want to edit on is not locked with the lock track icon. I rarely use the lock track feature in the track header, but this would prevent any changes, especially editing a clip onto that specific lock track. Hey, real quick, if you made it this far, I gotta welcome you here to this channel. I'm Chadwick, and this is Creative Video Tips. It's all about helping you create videos that make a difference and stand out. So if you're into that and DaVinci Resolve, click subscribe right now so you don't miss out on new tips. And it'll just help me know if I'm doing a good job teaching. Track destination selection can be found near the bottom of the timeline menu, and this will show you all the keyboard shortcuts. But if you just want to learn one shortcut tip today, it should be Command, Control on a PC with Shift, and your up and down arrows to move your video destinations up and down. Command with Option and your up and down arrows will move your audio destinations up and down. So it's either using Shift or Option with the Command key. It's easy to remember to use shift for video because video is higher than audio on a timeline. 
Then use Option with Command, because it's lower on the keyboard, like audio is lower on the timeline, for moving the audio destination selections. If you want the option to jump to a specific track with your keyboard shortcut, use Option and the number of that track for video. For instance, I wanted to go directly to V3, so I hit Option 3. And of course, if you need to disable a destination track, you can do that on V3 by hitting Option 3 again, and it'll disable it so that source clip will not be edited to that track. It gets ignored. Now you would add command to the option key with the audio track number for directly jumping to an audio destination, but this is broken in DaVinci Resolve 17.4.2, so we need to wait for the next patch to use this shortcut. And if you want a shortcut how long it takes to learn all the quirks of editing video in DaVinci Resolve, click on this playlist right over here, it's full of pro tips, and be one of the first of your friends to really understand auto select by watching this video up here, and because there's so much more to learn, I'll see you in the next video.